I would like to welcome our guest, Andy Craig, Vice President of Technical Operations at Naple Knoll Communities here in Cincinnati. Uh, we're going to talk about innovation, okay? Uh, and I'd like for you to share a story, a success story around innovation, uh, a solution to a problem that your company is, is working out right now that you're leading the charge, uh, charge around. Um, how you create the solution, what the, what, what the business uh, outcome you expect to come out of that. So let's talk about, you mentioned it's, 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 around, the, it's around IoT. Talk about the, uh, the, 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 uh, the challenges, the solution, and then we'll go from there. We specialize in senior living in healthcare. So our primary customer is senior citizens and the senior population, both within our communities and out in the general community. What we know is that the rate at which the senior population is growing is massive. We often refer to it as the silver tsunami. Sure. What we also know is that the amount of physicians that are entering the workforce out of college is not happening at a rapid rate. In fact, it's a very small uh, growth amongst physicians entering the workforce, while we have a significant growth of seniors entering retirement age. 10,000 a day, approximately, and this is gonna go on for decades. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what we see is a healthcare gap. You know, how are we gonna care for the older folks when we don't have enough young people, not just doctors, but young people in the workforce to care for them? The amount of senior citizens will uh, match and exceed the amount of children in our country. And that's the first time that's ever gonna happen. So without enough caregivers to provide care to such a massive population, also coupled with the fact that they're living longer. And as they live longer, they typically have two comorbidities. It could be blood pressure, um, it could be a hyperten hypertension or blood pressure, mm -hmm. um, other things like that. How do we keep them safe and independent longer? We believe that the Internet of Things is going to allow us to accomplish that. It's, it's, you struck a chord with me because I have a mother who's 97 who lives in a, in a facility, assisted living facility. And I have a son who's a surgeon, who's a doctor, mm -hmm. right? So it, it's, it's, it's neat to see. I, I completely get where you're going with this because my mom, our whole goal is to keep mom out of the hospital right. and, and productive and, and staying in the facility as, as productive as possible. Uh, but there are, there are challenges. There are challenges with, with that, right? There's, there's, you've, got, you've got older folks that you're going to be introducing maybe technology mm -hmm. into the equation. So what is what is a, what are some of the alk business uh, what are some of the challenges for the business to uh, to accomplish that IoT initiative? First, you have the financial hurdles, and you have to justify uh, the cost of getting these types of projects off the ground. They can be significant at first, but long term, when you look at the possibility of scaling something like this, uh, it's significant. Um, but we also look at the cost of an average hospital stay. It could be a thousand dollars a day and the amount of unnecessary hospital stays. And then on top of that, the impact that a hospital stay has on a senior citizen specifically tends to be detrimental. So we find that when people go to the emergency room, regardless of the severity of their condition, when they come home, they're often in worse condition and or their recovery time when they get home is much more significant than the younger person. So one of our biggest outcomes that we are gonna measure is the reduction in emergency department admissions mm -hmm. and readmissions for that matter. Of course, in the hospital world, that's a big number for them. Hospitals are charged with reducing readmissions. They need partners like us to help them do that. With such a big population, the senior citizens being the largest population that this country will ever see, you know, hospitals are gonna to need to partner with organizations like us to keep their readmission rates down. So walk me through that collaboration, not only with within the organization, your organization, uh, but with the healthcare, the healthcare providers, the hospitals themselves, in developing the solution together. So what we've learned is we have to position ourselves with the hospital. So we do have a lot of uh, local hospital systems that are aware of this project and really interested mm -hmm. in this project. What we have to do is provide measurable outcomes that show proof to them that our investment in IoT is going to be key to keeping their readmission rates down. 
Now, are you, are you sampling the technology today uh, in, 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 in specific use cases, and have, do you have data that you can share today that's Yeah, so, so we have been sampling this technology, and we're building it out in phases. So we learned that there's, there's kind of a few different phases um, of this project. Uh, some of it's more low-hanging fruit. So we see one phase is um, safety and security. So mm -hmm. this is kind of equipping a senior's home with just smart lighting. That's the low-hanging fruit, that's the easy stuff. But what we discovered was that over 40% of falls in seniors happen at night. And they happen at night on the trip from the bed to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And we discovered that more often than not, the reason why those happen is because there's typically dis, there's a sense of uh, disorientation, getting up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom in the dark and you lose your footing or your trip over something you didn't see. And a fall for a senior citizen can be uh, can have a long-term effect on their health, uh, and it increases their risk of death in a much shorter time frame if they incur a fall. So we learned that if we simply just had smart lighting, the moment their feet hit the floor, you can have a pressure sensor that detects them getting out of bed and gradually lift the lights up in the room and into the bathroom as well, and that significantly has reduced falls. That is. Uh that's a biggest that's a big fear mm -hmm. right for folks who have elderly elderly parents mm -hmm. that when, when my sisters call and they say hey mom fell it's like oh my gosh what's this? but so to, to to have the ability to have uh, that extra support is very uh, is very heartwarming so thank you thank you sure. for for, uh, for for spearheading that what other what are the uses of technology uh, like phone or laptop or, or video, what, what are the things are you developing that can help uh, in this initiative? We've learned that social engagement is so important for senior citizens, not just within the community, uh, but at large, especially with family. Over the last five or so decades, we've noticed in America that families are more dispersed across mm -hmm. the country. So that leads to isolation and disconnection from family members. So we've engaged our residents to participate in various different programs that we offer them that helps them learn new technology like tablets, iPads, Android devices, laptops. Uh, one of the things that is really taken off in our community is Amazon Alexa. Uh, oh, yeah. So we see a lot of residents that are engaging with their family members, both through voice and video through Alexa, mm -hmm. and being able to see grandchildren that they don't get to see that often, talk to their children um, more frequently, and stay connected with them. They're able to text message each other back and forth. Uh, so we've seen it's opened up a whole new world for senior citizens to keep them engaged with their family members, regardless of their geographic location. So you've seen results. Yes. Right. So, what are, what are the results that you're you're seeing from some of the devices being in the hands of the of, of the uh, of your of your of your client clientele? So, some of the results we've seen has been uh, more higher activity levels, which mm -hmm. tend to keep senior citizens more healthy. So, they're more engaged uh, with the community. Uh, so they connect with each other online. They set up meetings and greetings where they can go grab coffee, who's available to go to the symphony, things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really see uh, a big positive impact in their lives as a result of this. This is, this is so great. Um, I've been in technology for 25 years, and now you're, you're seeing the technology is really, it's, it's about the end, it's really shifted from the, the user to the end user. Mm -hmm. The end user is, is king today. Um, what are some of the other cool things that you that are there down the road that you're really looking to to bring uh, forward with IoT? So with IoT, I think we're going to move more into re remote patient monitoring mm -hmm. uh, and more into the healthcare space. So activities of daily living is going to be our next step. Being able to monitor people's trends, uh, their patterns, their behaviors, and then use big data and analytics and machine learning to understand when they veer off from their patterns, whether it's you know what time do they get up in the morning, how often do they eat through the day, how many steps do they take during the course of 24 hours. When those patterns change, that usually indicates the onset, onset of a potential health issue. Uh, for instance, we can monitor and track toileting. Sounds very strange, mm -hmm. but for senior citizens, a urinary tract infection can be very okay. significant event in their life because it causes a perfectly uh, cognitively functioning person uh, to go into a state that's similar to Alzheimer's or dementia. Mm -hmm. They can wander, they can go into unsafe spaces, they can get hurt. So if we can 
collect data from toilets to see that as toileting decreases, the likelihood of a urinary tract infection uh, being present or at the beginning uh, phases, we can intervene earlier. So it's all about uh, predictive care and eventually predictive medicine. That is just absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. It's really exciting technology these days, isn't it? It is. It's, it's uh, wonderful. And one of the most rewarding things is seeing the senior citizens adopt it. There's often this misconception that they're not interested in anything uh, around technology. And we find that that's quite the opposite. A lot of the things that we are doing and that we are going to do in the future, it's really them behind the scenes driving it. They may not necessarily know the technology that's needed, but they know the solution that they want. So the biggest thing they want is they want to remain independent. Mm -hmm. And any technology we can put in place to promote that independence and that length of stay in an independent environment, they get on board with. Uh, you mentioned Alexa and voice is becoming more prominent in how we interact with technology. Mm -hmm. uh, and because, because seniors have sometimes dexterity issues, mm -hmm. voice can be a, a, a powerful driver in, in, in driving that, you know, that technology experience. Mm -hmm. Is Alexa, is, is Alexa going to be part of the plan moving forward and other voice, voice yep. features? Yep. Alexa and voice features are definitely going to be a long-term play for us. It's not just about playing a game with Alexa or contacting a family member, mm -hmm. but uh, we're setting up homes right now that have multiple Echo Dots throughout. So one of the things we've noticed is senior citizens don't like the stigma of having an emergency pendant around their neck. I wouldn't either. Right. Uh, it would bother me. Mm -hmm. And so they don't want to carry that. So now what we've set up with Alexa and with a, a product that Amazon makes called Echo Connect, we tie directly into their phone line with Alexa so that if they fall anywhere in their house, there's enough of these Echo Dots set up that they could say, Alexa, call for help. It immediately calls uh, our staff, mm -hmm. our care staff and they have a live two-way conversation and we can send people to respond and help if it's a lift assist or some other type of medical event. Mm -hmm. This has been fascinating. I really appreciate your time uh, and I'm, I'm hoping we have an opportunity to engage uh, together to learn more about your, you know, the business sure. and where I can introduce Riverbed technology to help, mm -hmm. to help our seniors be more, uh, be more safe and live, live long and healthy, oh, yeah. healthy lives. So yes. thank you so much for your time. I would like to thank Andy Craig from Maple Knoll Communities for joining us today and for those listening to the interview to learn more go to comspark.tech